Hello. Today we're looking at Lactobacillus ruteri. Um, it's one that's endemic throughout mam mammals, um, but in the modern world, due to overuse of antibiotics, um, poor diets, and many other things that we do, lifestyle factors and whatever else, um, also, it's reduced in kids with C-sections as well. So there's a number of factors why it has reduced considerably within the population um, and, it's, and the specific beneficial strains as well. So we'll just cover one of these products. It's a Swedish product. Um, it's one that a number of my friends have taken and they are really happy that they've taken it. They've literally gone through now uh, in third batch, or they were on a third batch, I can't remember. And they're really seeing great results, great gut results, great oral results. They're seeing just results on a lot of fronts. Um, even though, but as I said to one of my mates, he said, my poo's great greater than it was before. And I said, too much information, mate. You know, keep it to yourself. <laughs> so let's get on with it. Anyway, let me just share my screen. Yes, people want to actually share their poo stories. Wonderful. Actually, Lactobacillus ruteri has been known for quite a bit. I'm not going to go into the discovery of that. If you really want to check out the, you know, but it, you know, the, the, the sort of thing that is really important is that you know, they actually isolated a lot of this in a number of animals. And the, one of the most important things is um, as they studied the different species and all that, they actually came across and they realized that Elruteri was the only species to constitute a major component of the Lactobacillus um, species present in the gut of each um, tested host animal. It was the most um, ubiquitous members of the mammalian gut microbiota. So when it comes to mammals that are healthy, we're talking about, this was actually seen to be, you know, quite present and quite endemic in that regard. So and they actually, up here, they actually talk about how they actually isolated in the feces and intestines of healthy animals. Um, and so it also present through the animal kingdom and discovered to be present naturally in intestines of healthy sheep, chicken, pigs and rodents. So, and including us humans as well, we're part of the mammalian family. So it's, if you're a healthy mammal, you will have quite a lot of these strains, but they are vulnerable to antibiotics. The problem is in our modern world, glyphosate, as I've pointed out, it's a recognized antibiotic. It's basically, it's not Harry Sapano saying it. It is basically, they've got a patent. They've got an absolute patent around the world um, for glyphosate as an antibiotic. And then, because a lot of people talk about, you know, you know, all these chemicals and all that. A lot of plant compounds are actually um, even worse than glyphosate, and they're actually natural chemicals. You know, the majority of them. That isn't the problem. The problem with glyphosate is it's anti it's antibiotic effects. That means it really just fucks up the gut microbiome. You know, and a lot of the leaky gut issues, a lot of the actual modern issues of the uh, um, you know, colitis and all sorts of other things. I think there is an element um, there of glyphosate that, that's playing a role. Um, the problem is we haven't had enough research in that area. We know when you actually assault the body, with, we, there's enough literature out there. I don't have to, people can go and research it themselves. I, um, I may do something on antibiotics in the future to explain, you know, um, uh, what the research actually shows there, but there's plenty of research in the literature showing quite clearly that overuse of antibiotics and the reduction of a number of strains of bacteria have been found in unhealthy people. 
So I'll leave it at that um, rather than actually um, spending too much time on it. Anyway, antimicrobial, we've seen a lot of that sort of stuff in it. Intestinal health, oral health, general health. I'll go through the actual studies later. Um, protection against pathogens, really good against salmonella. You know, it's been shown, E. coli, a number of things. Now, if you do take the other strain of E. coli, the non-pathogenic, I wouldn't take it with this. So I'd actually use the other one to colonize or do it after, either one or that. I would probably do it after because I really want to get this colonized in first because it's got so many important fixing a lot of gut problems that people have and all that sort of stuff. The other one's good for pathogens as well. Um, so you could use it for, let's say, a month and then switch to this and then go back to that at, at a future date to guarantee that you you can put back. Now, I don't know. I haven't found anything in the literature that actually shows that that specific strain can be affected by um, Lactobacillus ruteri. But I know it does affect the pathogenic E. coli. So will it affect the non-pathogenic? No idea. That's the only reason I'm saying that. So since I don't have science, I can't give you a definitive answer on that. Um, there's no re general health. Um, chemical and trauma induced, like Treating colonic tissue, that's rats' colonic tissue, um, and basically deliberately, they deliberately cause damage, which is similar to the condition that we see in ulcerative, ulcerative colitis. So the, they, caught, they caused you know, massive damage to, to the actual um, colon of uh, these little poor rats. And then they treated them with l Ruteri immediately after removing the acid. Obviously, humans wouldn't be dousing down acid or putting acid up their ass, unless you're in a nutcase. But uh, you know, it completely reversed the ill effects. Now, obviously, this is short-term damage, and obviously, you know, um, but it shows that if you were to take and colonize with these type of strains for a longer period of time, you would get massive improvements in gut health. And gut health is tied to brain health. And so, you know, there, there is a connection um, there. So that's an important um, thing as well. We know there are brain cells in the gut and they communicate with the brain. So let's move on now. Um, they're looking at also other related things like sepsis as well, um, endotoxins, um, um, liver injury. Uh, so there's a lot of things here. These poor rats have been put through hell on back, chemical induced liver damage, um, and high doses of l ruteri greatly mitigate the symptoms of a lot of these things. So great stuff. In that regard, um, really good stuff. And I'm glad I came across this Swedish company. Anyway, I will move on now. Now, the strains that I'm actually looking at is this product here that I've purchased. And I'll just show you. There's the product. So there's the product actually. So, okay. And we'll switch back to sharing. Give me a sec. Says you don't have to refrigerate it, but I do. It's not. Um, it will last longer if you do refrigerate it. So 
that's me, you know, do whatever you like, it's your money. Anyway, let's move on. So these are the two strains they're actually using. Okay, so DMS17938 and a TCC PT, that should be PT, and then A6475 as they actually show it in the literature. Anyway. And nope. That is the actual Australian source and site. You can get it on iHerb and um, now I think it's on Amazon as well. Anyway, now these are the sources of where they've come from. So we're looking at the 17938. Oops. So that's, I don't have that listed here, unfortunately. Anyway, I believe it was similar to this one, isolated from a Peruvian mother's milk. Anyway, the other one is this one, which is isolated from a Phoenix mother's milk. That as well, that one there, that has that's in development currently, so it hasn't been, they haven't created a product for it. Um, this actually in, improves, helps people lose weight, basically. So it's been shown to actually um, help weight loss, but it's still in development currently. And this one is from, I think she was around, she was a centenarian, this Japanese woman, and she had really good teeth. So it's shown to have really good oral um, you know, improve oral health. This one and the other one also seem to have as well some. So let's go through the different. So there's there's that one there, the first one that we're looking at, and that there's a lot of studies that show good improvements in gut in the you know the gut function. Um, this one here, um, both that one and this other one, which isn't part of this product, but they both do the same. Um, they actually improve gum, gum health and stuff like that. That's the one, yeah, I've mixed them up. Not the other one, it's this one here that shows that. And this one and the other one, both of them that are in that pack, GI tract, really good for the GI tract. Um, and the second one, on there, always mixing them up, that's really good for bone health. Um, there is, let me just, oh, not that, get out of the way. Okay, beneficial effects of the 6475 strain on bone density um, in males and depend, depend on um, lymphocytes. Lymphocytes get regulated by vitamin D. Um, remember that, just keep that in mind in your, you know, so T lymphocytes, you know, you know, part of the T cells. So I'm not gonna go through this, it's just to remind you that bone density has a lot to do with vitamin D and the immune system and you know dealing with cytokines and this is and also has a modulating effect in that regard okay i will add this people can look at the study at, the, at their own time in preventing bone loss in multiple models of osteoporosis i'm not going to go through the study we've got a lot of stuff to look at anyway so we will move on go away so their um, osteopenia, so you know muscle loss, um, bone density in patients, you know so bone density issues, um, 
and usually the osteopenia is associated with also um, some level of muscle um, loss as well. So it probably will help there as well. There's a lot of things that we're finding new stuff all the time. So that specific strain has all these other benefits. Now, let me have like covered that, covered that, covered that. Yes, now we're going into the full study sort of stuff in terms of diseases and stuff like that. Okay, so. Uh, Basically, he says that Eleutheria is well studied in human organized as large numbers of mammals and humans. It's found in different um, body sites, including gastrointestinal tract, urinary tract, skin, breast milk. Um, the abundance of Eleutheria varies amongst um, different individuals. Several beneficial effects of it have been noted. It can, be produce, can be produce antimicrobial molecules such as organic acids, ethanol, and root. Routerine. Um, this one is really important. Um, we will look at that further down um, in terms of dealing with, the, with things in the body. So, also reduces the production of pro inflammatory cytokines while promoting regulatory T cell development and function. So, you know, vitamin D also is involved in T cell molecules modulation this helps as well so playing a lot of roles in there you know we the synergistic relationships this is why i say reductionism tells you nothing all these fuckwits out there that just talk about reductionism the reality is there's a lot of synergistic stuff and i'm trying to understand all the different narratives how these things are interacting with all sorts of nutrients with food and whatever else so i'm always looking to understand that much better um on the food side, I did forget one thing that is important. Um, where was it? Uh, come on, Harry, pick up your fucking act. Oops, it was right up at the top here somewhere where they were talking about the isolation of it. Um, ah, right here. It, is, it has been isolated in many foods, especially meat and milk. So, and this is one of the most important and dominant probiotics that we had in our body, which we've decimated because of a lot of plant food and all of antibiotics. So we've been double dousing anti rutery um, lifestyles with too many, you know, glyphosate plants and uh, too many misuse of antibiotics. And we've really been hammering ourselves. And then we wonder why we've got all these gut issues and all that. And then we put a whole lot of raw veggies in there that rip our gut, yeah, just add to the misery. Anyway. Back to the study. Yes. Blame my erratic brain for jumping back and forward. Anyway, let's move on. I just wanted to make that point because somebody asked me last one about the other one. Oh, you know, if I, if I don't need fiber, will I, you know, please, you know, bacteria will get onto anything. They will use any medium, plant, all that. But these specifically are mostly focused on the animal type foods, which is a good thing because it actually tells us that, you know, our sort of lifestyle is much more with that ancestral type of gut microbiome. So let's move on. Anyway, supplementation, more studies. I'm not going to go through all of that. Let's go down here. So when we're looking at histamines, everybody talks about histamines and all that. Now, histamines is a big, 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 big naturopathic piece of bullshit. But I will do a separate video on that in a future date. I just haven't got around doing it. Um, there's more than meets the eye. It's not histamines. It's inflammation. Histamines are actually released by the body to douse inflammation 
And these little buggers can actually modulate histamine and work with it for the anti-inflammatory effects. Anyway, so you know, the, the amount of garbage out there that people believe is incredible. You know, without histamines, we our immune system will not work properly. So if you're over-inflaming yourself for whatever reason, then you need to look at your diet. Maybe remove that honey, Frankie. Anyway, let's move on. Vitamin, um, vitamin B12 and B9 really helps as well. Mm, maybe an alternative solution for some of the vegetated in, um, beyond our community that could be helped with this strain as well. A lot of antimicrobial activity as well, and also improving bio, you know, the, the sort of the biofilm side of things. Let's move on. Gut colonization of L. ruteri, like the Bacillus ruteri. Anyway, built for digestion and absorption. It bloody well is. It's built for an acidic um, environment. And when you're eating species appropriate diet, you will have good stomach acid. Um, some sorts of GI have developed colonization examples of this. Seems in a low pH condition. Because of gastric acid and bile salts in upper intestine. Thus, the very first of colonization of GI tract is to survive in such an environment. Multiple L. ruteri strains are resistant to low pH and bile salts. They are resistant. But that is why they can colonize. They are the natural colonizers. And we have been literally blasting them to death with glyphosate and antibiotics. Anyway, this resistance is believed to be at least partially dependent on the ability to form biofilms. Anyway, it's you on another point. I will come back to biosalts as well. Very important for good gallbladder function and all that. Mm, we're getting there as well, don't worry. L is attached to the intestinal epithelial, and some strains can adhere to epithelial cells in a range of vertebrates hosts. Possible mechanism for adherence is binding. So this goes into all the binding effects and all that and how it works and how it interacts and all that. If somebody wants to go, they can look at that. I just wanted to show you where it was. We will move on to the main crux because there's a lot to cover. This, you know, production of metabolites with health promoting effects. I'm not going to go into this, all of it, but it basically antimicrobial immunomodulatory effects of the strains linked to metabolite production profile, a few well studied metabolites with regard to probiotic potential of L. ruteri. So it has a lot of um, you know, immune modulating effects, a bit like vitamin D. And it does also work well with vitamin D, which is another really good thing. Uh, remember this routine mix, okay? Routine can inhibit a wide range of mi microorganisms, mainly gram-negative bacteria, you know, the sort of pathogenic stuff. Not surprisingly, most lactobacillus are resistant to rut rutinary, um, amongst which all ruteri strains. Well, the only problem is they're not resistant to antibiotics or glyphosate. Unfortunately, the poor bastards. Strains exert the most resistance. In addition to, and this is where, when you're eating a species appropriate diet, you can have greater acidity, stomach acidity, better bile function, and you'll have more of these, and you'll have better health. So it all goes together, it all links together. Anyway, reading too much, and I'm taking this, it'll end up becoming an hour or two if I don't um, move a bit faster. Anyway, um, H. pylori, not only Salmonella, H. pylori as well. And uh, um, so really good for that as well, which is good because we basically need this bugger to basically dealt with. You know, it's another reason because L. ruteri to treat this infection. You know, gastric, um, you know, chronic 
gastritis, peptic ulcers, you know, all these sort of things. Again, because of antibiotic use and inappropriate foods that, um, that increases the pH and not lowers it, so we've got a less acidic stomach, has allowed H. pylori to become endemic in our world. You know, people having ulcers and all sorts of um, issues. And also because we've got less of this, um, really, these beneficial bacteria. Another problem, you know, in our lifestyle, which we've caused over and over again. Anyway, these are some of the studies. Um, these are the strains um, of this strain. And well, this one here is the ones that we're interested in, okay? Not the other ones. So, path a decrease in pathogen load in the stomach. We need to reduce the stomach pathogens. How are we gonna get better stomach acid and better basically functioning of the stomach? So, if a stomach's fun function, 14 days. Decreasing H. pylori and other shit, um, you know, candida and whatever else that actually is causing massive stomach problems. Good. Let's move on. Um, this strain as well. This um, is also good for, remember, oral teeth, oral hygiene, um, health as well. I'll get into the other one. Um, currently, uh, where was up? Uh, go back, not there, but there. Uh, this Japanese one, for some bloody reason, don't ask me, the Australian government, um, it's very hard to get access to this for some reason. This is what my friend told me anyway. So I don't know what the options are currently being investigated. This is not part of this, it's part of another product from the same Swedish company. Um, there's always third country options. We won't go into that. I've already mentioned that to Necro Kitty about the other one. But, uh, you know, the, um, this one is from, is a really potent, you know, improving the oral health. Really good as well for people that um, may have had a lot of gum disease, a lot of um, issues that may have come off a plant-based diet and had a lot of oral issues, this is a real good one if you can get your hands on it um, in your country. So it's a bit like the other one with the FDA, this one with our authorities, maybe they basically, the, um, the Dentist Association of Australia is basically, um, let's say, line the pockets of some politicians. I'm not saying that it's happened, but it could potentially have happened. So... You know, we're not, I'm not accusing anyone. This is not an accusation. So let's move on. But that is a really good one. So this one, the first strain that we're looking at, the one that um, we can get um, in every country, as far as I know, 20 days, three weeks, practically, 93% success eradication of pathogens. Really good. Um, these are other strains, improving G, um, improvement of GI symptoms, no improvement. Um, I do not recommend this strain. It, it's not that it's bad, but it's not a potent one for the sort of what we want it for. Um, that's a different sort of company that actually produces that. Um, so 17938 um, is... That one there. Oops, wrong one. So, and that's the one that actually has the biggest amount. Um, this one is similar to this one in some regards. I've seen stomach stuff as well in this regard, but that's not what this study shows anyway. That's not part of what this study, this just shows a general throughout the whole system that you're actually reducing. So, which is, you know, you can go away and look at the actual study because it actually talks about H. pylori in Sardinian patients. So that's the one there, which is our strain here. So they're talking about the whole. This one only does the stomach. This one does 
H. pylori and a whole lot of other things right through. So um, I'm not saying that the other one's not good. It's pretty good, you know, the 14 days to really eradicate a lot of, um, a lot of pathogenic load. But um, this one seems to be, you know, 93% is pretty good as far as I'm concerned. Anyway, um, let's move on. And so these are, this is another one, reduction of antibiotic associated side effects in irradiation therapy. So again, H. pylori, randomized double um, blind um, placebo control. And I think these people are going through irradiation therapy as well, so, which is reduces your, your defense system and stuff like that. So they may have had cancer or whatever, I don't know. Um, so that you become more vulnerable to pathogens. So that seemed to de do really well. Um, and this one here, again, H. pylori, so pretty good. So let's move on. Um, anyway, so that covers all of that part of viruses. Uh, and also, Elderberry antagonizes, stops the growth, and eventually kills various species of candida. So, also has an antifungal properties. So, we will get to the vaginal health for women as well. So, histamines. Um, this is complicated, so I'm not going to go through it. People can read it themselves. But what it what it does is it is working with histamines to reduce inflammation, basically. So that's what it's saying. Okay. Anyway, now with vitamins, this is for the vegetated, you know, potentially vegetated members of your family that you don't want to become demented and well, they are crazy as they are. You don't want them becoming worse. Um, what they can do is they can take this, which also helps um, in the production of various types of vitamins, including B12, B9, um, and also um, tell them to basically use some fat like coconut um, oil or, you know, some bloody, so they can get, because it, it does require glycerol. The, so, you know, if they're on low fat, forget it, they're not going to get anything. But if they're basically consuming at least some sort of plant-based fat, they will basically get the backbone of glycerol to basically then um, help produce these sort of things. So that's another part. So the, the, the main ones here is basically synthesize a number of others, but the key ones is that is most concerned to most people is folate and B12. Most people aren't getting enough. So this will help. So it's another biohack. So especially if you've got an older member of your family who may have a B12 deficiency and uh, they may have some gut malabsorption, all sorts of issues that modern day people have, you know, this would help in that regard as well. So that's another um, element. Um, biofilms, adherence, you know, I'm not going to go into that. People will look at that themselves um, mediated modulation of host microbi microbiota. Emergence evidence suggests that the host microbiota and immune system interact um, to maintain tissue homeostasis in healthy individuals. Many diseases have been associated um, with perturbation of the microbiota, so in balances and, you know, where restoration of the microbiota has been demonstrated to prevent, ameliorate, prevent um, several diseases. Why well, say twice? It means the same bloody thing, prevent or ameliorate, you know. Anyway, oh, me. Um, is able to influence the diversity and composition of metabolic functions of the gut, oral and vaginal microbiota. So, um, women do have a, um, a vaginal microbiota because they've got a reproductive system and, you know, thrush, other issues that women suffer, um, certain fungal issues and stuff like that. This really helps. 
basically. Um, so for men and women, the common thing is the gut and the oral health part of things, but for women, there's an added bonus, um, the vaginal part. So very important. Anyway, let's move on. Uh, now with in, in, infants, compared to vaginal delivery of infants, um, C-section um, delivered infants, blah, blah, high abundance, blah, blah. Um, uh, in one study, treating C-section babies with Elrutary DSM-17938, the first strain in that supplement, from two weeks to four months of age, modulate, um, modulated the development of a gut microbiota towards a com the community pattern found in vaginal delivered infants. So basically, a kid that actually doesn't get the right um, microbiome um, from C-section, you can actually correct this with this. So you can take this, or let's say there are kids in young age that are taking antibiotics because they've got a lot of you know, issues, health issues in the early stages, and they've really wrecked their gut. Well, you can give the kid this and fix things, sort things out. Take your, I would probably do, they say two to, um, weeks to four months, I'd do six months. Your kid after all, you know. Um, that's the way I would do it. I'd go a bit further just to be 100%. Uh, community pattern found in vaginal delivery infants, the similar, and there's a study, if people wanna go away and look at it, the gut microbiota structure of vaginal born infants remains uh, unaltered upon l Ruteri supplementation. So the kids that are born and haven't had any disturbances, it's not gonna make much difference in a sense with what they say. It's usually as we get older, we're given something we're, uh, from our mother when we're born and then we go away and make sure that we consume as much glyphosate as we can and as much antibiotics as we can to just fucking make an absolute mess of our system anyway. In another study, um, I think I've covered that, um, gram positive bacteria counts, gut, you know, and the differences that that's done. Um, I'll, I'll leave that. Uh, we've got still more to cover. I mean, look where I'm at. I'm, at, I'm only about a quarter. Fuck. Um, and let's move on. Uh, type 2, the same strain. This, this strain, that first strain is so good. Type 2. Diabetics. Uh, also, the other thing, upregulation of circulating bile acids has been, you know, has been proposed as a reason for the modulated gut microbiota. Remember what I said last time: how you know SIBO, you know, pathogenic stuff and candida and all that growing up through your small intestine and really get ha causing havoc in your stomach in you know your oral health and right through well this little bucket will sort that out and biosalts um, that are produced properly will mean that your gallbladder and all that should work much better as well this is one element in the um the gallbladder protocol there are other elements you'll have to wait for that video um, for the other elements that are part of that so it's an important part. Um, so let's move on from there. Uh, okay, that's in piglets. We're not gonna bother with that. I'm not a pig. Okay, oral microbiota uh, in a randomized um, controlled trial, 12 weeks of daily consumption of two elderberry strains that one of that led to shifts in oral microbiota composition through the bacterial species, which just was not altered. So again, the first strain plays a very important role and I can confirm that from my friends that have been taking it longer than me. Um, even though I've put them onto it, I actually only went on that years ago, but then I, um, I tried it once and 
I didn't actually continue it. They've actually gone through a number. Now they're on the third and they've noticed significant improvements. So you do need to get a certain level of colonization. And at the time I was taking that, um, and it wasn't exactly this strain in particular, it was um, some other um, strains of Belruteri, but I was also taking antibiotics and I was also eating a lot of shit. So it probably wasn't really helping in that regard. So, you know, I put them on this and recently I've said, yeah, why well, don't I try it as well? You know, maybe I'll see improvements as well. So I've just recently just started this. So I'm at the early stages. They have been my major guinea pigs. Anyway, so let's move on and I will report back how I feel down the track. Because I've only had three, <laughs> three days. So yeah. I haven't actually consumed it for very long. Um, so I can't actually report anything currently. I can only go on the anecdotal evidence of two, N2, my two brothers um, that have been doing it. Anyway, the vaginal microbiota, vaginal bacteria, community healthy women. One study showed that 14 days of l administered could restore the normal vaginal flora in postmenopausal women. Ah, there you go, women. That you may, interesting, so Kitty will love that. Interestingly, the relative abundance of lactobacillus. Bacilli is largely decreased in bacterial um, vaginosis patients, which basically means that women that have got issues um, use these really colourful terms, don't they? And pretty much, I will move on to the immune modulation. So, however, the upper regulation was eliminated in the A, the vitamin A deficient rats, such as the auditory functions in an A, in a vitamin A dependent manner. So when it comes to immunomodulation, you really need to be on an animal-based diet with a good vitamin A status, okay? So plant-based isn't gonna do it for you. And better carotene isn't gonna fucking do it for you, especially if you're Irish, British, Northern European descent with poor beta carotene conversion, you vegetarded out there. Mm. So you're not gonna get it much help from this in terms of immunomodulation. Have yourself some eggs or basically really just fucking eat a steak. Anyway, can induce anti-inflammatory trig cell. Anyway, we will move on and on. We've got a lot to, and that's the, you know, the lymphocyte modulation, all that that it's going through. Um, the ILs, we know what they mean, interleukins, okay? So we know that interleukins, you know, cytokine production, stuff like that. So anyway, these elderly medi mediated induction of trig cells under various diseases and non-diseased conditions. Obviously, these are all mouse ones only the bottom ones, uh, a human one. So they're still mammals. And this, and L. Terry is in all mammals. So the health of organs, um, it's not as if we're looking at diets, which different animals are, you know, so this is looking at a bacteria. So if it's got benefits to, you know, your spleen, your kidneys and stuff like that, you know, it's going to definitely, and that's the other variety, 6475, uh, 64, the other strain. Okay, so when we're looking at those, we're looking at kidneys, you know, stuff like that, wound healing. Um, it seems that Western diet associated obesity um stuff like that that's the wild type in spleen 
um, but that's not that's a different type that's a mouse one strain so we don't really care this is the intestines so this helps we know that it does help with gut um, that's a that's a wild one in terms of that basically these just help with the colon and everything so all of them but the wild types IBA um, stuff like that this is in humans IBD uh, so looking at inflammatory bowel disease basically so the other one is lymph nodes so again the immunomodulating part neuromodulatory capacity so this is the brain now we're looking at so nervous system so glial cells lined neurotropic factor so looking at a lot of things that actually improve in brain function as well you know in terms of GABA and we can go on um, reversing leaky gut so people can go away and look at the studies themselves um, a growing body of evidence links microbiota and bacterial translocation with multiple diseases including several autoimmune disorders so people that have got autoimmune diseases as well, this will help go away due to its strong modulatory effects of host microbiota and immune responses with almost no safety concerns. Well, it's been in mammals, L. ruteri has been in mammals for, you know, since mammals have existed. So how can there be a safety issue? Um, but yeah, you know, they have to put it in there. Anyway, let's move on. Indeed, the therapeutic potential of various eruditary strands has been studied in diverse diseases and resulted uh, promising in many cases. Yes, they are. And uh, we also find them in longevity people as well. Early life disorders. So this is for infants and all that. So again, our favourite little clinical efficacy has demonstrated most clinical trials were successful. Again, people can look at the studies themselves, go away, it'll fly. Um, worth mentioning that it is naturally contained in human breast milk, obviously, because it's so important to a child. So if a child doesn't get breastfed, it's not going to get this strain. So mums, breastfeed your children or give them the damn thing. Elroteri did not show significant effects on allergies, eczema in infants after they were born. Um, so we've got nothing on that. So some people have said that it actually has improved, I've heard on the interwebs in terms of adults, but I haven't seen really strong signs in that area because really when it comes to these sort of things, skin related things and allergies, in particular, I've always said, you know, lungs, lung surfactant, what are we talking about? Choline, um, palmitate, so saturated fat and the choline, and also vitamin D. So that's where, and with skin, we're looking at MK4, niacin, and, and retinol. So we've covered that in many other cases, but I thought I'd bring it up. Anyway, lupus. So if you anyone's got lupus, um, that's another one. Obesity. So this was they actually they actually found that a bit obesogenic some people had some of these L. Ruteri, stuff like that. But when they actually then did actual clinical trials, it was demonstrated that only that strain actually reduced weight which is the well, that one there which is in production which we're still waiting on them to basically bring out so when they bring it out um i will let you guys know and so that can help you with weight loss 
Um, these also will help you with weight loss in a sense, they will actually improve your gut system and all that. So they will allow things to work better in that regard. But this actually is demonstrated textually, it doesn't matter what damn diet you're on, even if you're doing indiscretions, um, it was, you know, so body weight of a mouse fed with a high fat diet. So it actually lost weight. And you know what the high fat diet is? Randall cycle, sugar and fat. But this is a mouse, remember? It's a mouse model. So I don't think it will give you a license to, you know, to basically put a whole lot of honey on your steak and eat it. Okay, Frankie? No, it won't. Believe me. So our their metabolic rate is much higher than ours. That's why they don't live very long. Um, so that is, yes, they only get about two years of life. So I wouldn't basically, they can burn a lot away very quickly. So we're not the same designed. Um, changes in adipose and liver weight were consistent with body weight changes. So even improvements in terms of fatty liver and stuff like that, it seems to have a bit of an effect there, some modulating effect. They still don't know enough. Um, well, they can show, they can demonstrate a mechanism in a mammal, but they don't know how it works. So, you know, I'm not going to speculate. A lot of people would, but I'm not. So, neurodevelopment disorders. So, basically, a lot of people are doing fecal microbiome transplants and all sorts of things. Uh, further analysis showed that the abundance of L. Ripieri, um was reduced more than ninefold in gut microbiome or you know, people that really weren't in the best social effects of MHFD um, offspring were rescued by direct L. Ruteri administration, suggesting L. Ruteri is regulating neurodevelopment in MHFD mice. So if you're a mouse and you've got a mental disorder, you will really get well with this. Um, I suspect it'll have a, a positive effect on all mammals. How much on humans? Do not know. Um, we need more research in that regard. But it's not going to hurt, even if you get a small benefit of improved, um, you know, improvements in that area. Um, stress or exposure and stuff like that. Um, that's self-explanatory, more or less, reverse stress-induced, um, C, rodentium infections, blah, blah, blah. You know, so it's really good at, uh, you know, these pathogenic cytokines of this um, C, rodentium sort of uh, infection causes. So it has an effect on that, which is good. Now, we'll just go to the conclusions part. Um, we've had to cover a lot. I will pin these and people can read them um, at the, in their own time. I just wanted to cover quickly a number of points about the, how beneficial these strains are. There's been a decrease in the abundance of l ruteri in humans in the past few decades, likely caused by modern lifestyle, antibiotics use, Western diet, improved hygiene. Um, now the improved hygiene, remember some of these, when we're talking about a bit like the other strain that I actually showed you last time, and this, these sort of strains, they're very much soil born. You know, kids don't go and play in, in mud. They don't eat mud. They don't, you know, do a lot of things like that. So they're missing out on a lot of things. Um, so that's a factor. Um, but I think really that's the biggie and that's the second biggie. Really, you know, it's antibiotics. 
and the shit Western diet that actually, so, you know, sugar that actually promotes candida, that actually promotes all the pathogenic, um, the, you know, strains that love the Western diet of all you can get full buffet of sugar. Anyway, such decreased coinc coincides with high incidence of inf inflammatory diseases over the same period of time. While evidence is lacking to establish the correlation, it may be helpful to increase hereditary colonization or facilitate its probiotic function as a new and relatively safe strategy against inflammatory diseases. In addition, through direct regulation or indirect modulation by the host microbiota, hereditary plays an impressive role in eliminating infections and attenuating both GI gut GI diseases and diseases in remote tissues, peripheral neuropathy and all sorts of things. And sometimes people with diabetes and all sorts of things can have in remote tissue can have, you know, sort certain pathogenic type of stuff going on. So yes, this can really help in a lot of things. You want this to colonize the whole body. The safety and tolerance of elderly has been proven by numerous clinical studies. I don't need a fucking clinical study. It's been in mammals for millions of years. It's not going to be harmful. I don't need them to tell me that it's actually bloody good. But they need to point that out, boys and girls. The multiple elderly strains with different host origins and many of the probiotic functions of elderly are strain dependent. That's why I focus on strains, not broad spectrum. Because broad spectrum, you'll get from food to some extent. But specific strains are sometimes hard to get. So you have to supplement, especially people that have come from a poor food environment and an antibiotic sort of exposure or a high antibiotic, high glyphosate exposure. Um, with different and... Therefore, it may be advantageous to combine different strains of L. Ruteri to maximise their beneficial effects. Mm, not really. Most of those you will get from animal foods, the majority of them, especially from dairy. Um, you will get um, a number of the other strains, so we don't really have to worry. You'll get them, you'll get them in the other um, products, especially raw milk. So I'm less concerned about um, those. But these strains, um, especially to the now the days that the overuse of antibiotics and other things, um, some grain feeding to even cows that produce milk, there's a lot of the different things and they do have a deleterious effect on the milk quality. Even in the sort of raw milk that I get, it doesn't have any... Um, bacteria because it's, they've been annihilated because of that process. So you do lose the beneficial bacteria like um, the, these strains. Unfortunately, that's the only type of raw milk we can get at this stage. Um, maybe in the future things will improve, but I can also, can, I can also buy consumed French and Italian raw cheeses. So I do get some of the strains from those products as well. So I'm less... Um, too concerned in that regard. Yes, so that's pretty much the big overview of this product. And uh, I think it's a great product and all the people that have used it that have had gut issues and a number of other issues um, are reporting back to me that it's really helping them. So um, I told them to be hush hush about it until I did my video. But uh, you know, and also I, I wanted to be I wanted to I've looked at the research, but there's nothing like some real having some experimental humans to do a bit a few tests on that to confirm what I thought um, would be the case. But it's always good to basically get that additional confirmation so i hope you know you guys enjoyed this got something out of it 
and this will provide you with information to, to use to improve your health. This is not medical information, it's not meant to be, it's basically just showing you the, what the science and the current research is showing us in regards to these strains, um, how you apply them is up to you. Anyway, see you.